Hello everyone! In this sixth Adobe After Effects tutorial of this series for beginners, you will learn how to edit in the 3D plane by adding a camera and different lights. Let's begin by refreshing our knowledge of accessing different views. For demo purposes, we want to toggle between Active Camera View and Custom View 3. To add a new camera, go to Layer, New, Camera. A window will pop up and here's where you can alter different characteristics of the camera, such as the film size, focal length, zoom, and angle of view to just name a few. You will see that if you change zoom, angle of view, or focal length, the other two will change too, since they are linked. You can have the ability to access multiple views as shown here. Let's prepare the file you need in order to follow along with this demo. First, open up an image in Adobe Photoshop. You will learn how to make an image with two layers that you can then manipulate in Adobe After Effects. Begin by adding a layer and ensuring that you are on the background layer before you complete the next step. Select the magnetic lasso tool and trace a subject in your photograph. In my case, I want to select the flower, excluding the background of the other stems and blades of grass. Once you finish selecting it, hit Ctrl C or Command C to copy and Ctrl V or Command V to paste in the new layer. Make sure to save this file as a PSD file in a destination that you will remember. Then import it into Adobe After Effects in separate layers. In Custom View 3, after making the layers editable in 3D, you can alter the position of the three different axes and experiment. After watching this demo, you will know how to create a cool effect where it looks as if the subject you selected is literally jumping out of the photograph. To create this, you will need to adjust the position on the Z axis of one or both of the layers. You can also animate the opacity to create the illusion of the background of the image, fading away as the subject of the photo emerges from the background. You can also play with the rotation on any axis you choose. You will notice that you may have to adjust the positioning of the camera. You can adjust it in different ways, such as in the top view and dragging the lines, or going to the controls panel on the left of the timeline window. Be careful with what axis you choose to rotate because the two layers may intersect. It can be a pretty neat effect, but if it is not desired, make sure you are changing the numbers on the right axis. To make this effect more efficient, we need shadows. To produce shadows, we need light. Add a light by going to Layer, New, Light. You have a choice of four different lights, Parallel, Spot, Point, and Ambient. We are going to add a point light first. Not only do you have the transform properties as you do for any other object added to your timeline, but you also have a menu called Light Options, where you can adjust the intensity, color, and shadows, to name a few. Now when we hit play, you can see how the shadows enhance the clip, especially at the point in which the two layers intersect. Let's reset the rotation transformation keyframes of the background layer and see how the light has contributed. You can also adjust the quality called cone angle, which changes the radius of the light. You can make it appear as if it is a spotlight by lessening the angle. Cone feather adjusts how blurry the circular outline of the point light is. You can then change the color of the light, which changes the tint or hue of the image. You can also use the eyedropper tool to select a color of something that appears on your screen. Let's hide the point light and add a spotlight. It has the same properties as the point light, but it adds a different effect depending on which characteristics you choose to play with. Again, you can transform the light in the view window itself or in the window on the left.
Also, when adding shadows, make sure the background layer accepts the shadows. If you place this light at a different angle as shown, the shadow is now visible behind the subject as it moves away from the background. You can adjust how harsh the shadow looks as well in the same transform window on the left. Now let's add an ambient light, keeping the spotlight visible and seeing how each interact with each other. Let's do the same with the point light and adjust the intensity of each. Let's look at the colors reflecting off of the background. You can see the red and blue and even purple as they blend while the subject moves toward us. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, feel free to leave questions in the comments and suggestions as to what you would like to see in my next tutorial. Thank you for supporting my channel and hope to see you again. Stick around for future content.